Good morning from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be making some cranberry wine. I'm going to begin by adding a little bit of spring water into this glass and popping that in the microwave for just 30 seconds. So the microwave in the water has just warmed it up a little bit and that's what I want because I'm going to add into that a teaspoonful of Lalvin champagne sparkling wine and cider yeast and I don't want to put it into cold water because it won't like that and that's going to go into the water. Alongside that I've got Young's yeast nutrient and I'm going to put a level teaspoon of that also into the water and I'm going to stir those together and this is going to create a nice bit of activity. Hopefully the yeast will waken up and that's going to mean that fermentation will be a faster process. So I'm just going to leave this to one side now while I get on with the rest of the recipe. I'm going to drop four tea bags into the pan. Then I'm going to add some spring water. And I'm using spring water because our tap water is a bit chlorine-y. I've probably added about a litre of spring water. And I want to boil a pan of tea now. So while I'm waiting for the tea to come to a boil, it's now time to get my cranberries into the demijohn. And the cranberries that I'm using today come in carton form. It's cranberry juice drink from Concentrate. So if we just turn this over and have a look, the ingredients are water, cranberry juice from Concentrate, cranberry puree, flavourings and sweetener. There's no harmful preservatives, so this will ferment just fine. And this is a lot quicker and cleaner than trying to add cranberries themselves and crushing them up and uh, messing around straining them. This is following the method that's used in turbo ciders, for, which I've learned about from the Facebook group Turbo Ciders for All. So it's simply a case of just pouring the juice through a funnel into the demijohn. How easy is that? I'm just going to add three to start with because I've got to add the tea into this yet and I want to see how far up the demijohn it comes. So this is what I'm left with, half a demijohn of cranberry juice, three litres in there. So while my tea comes to a boil also, I'm going to weigh out a kilogram of brewing sugar. And I'm adding a kilogram of sugar into this because the cranberry juice is very low in sugar and it needs sugar to be able to create alcohol. So I'm just squeezing the tea bags. The tea bags add tannins to the wine, which gives it a bit more flavour and body. So I'm just taking the tea bags out now. And I'm going to add into my tea my kilo of brewing sugar. It's very fine brewing sugar, it will dissolve quickly. And the tea's taken on a lovely colour actually, it's very similar to the cranberry juice. And I'm just going to give it a little stir to help that sugar dissolve, it won't take long at all. So now it's just a case of pouring the tea into the demijohn. So it's a good job that I didn't put the fourth litre of cranberry juice in because that's filled it right up now. I'm just going to pour some of this now into my hydrometer flask and what I pour into here will not be going back into the demijohn and that makes me a little bit of space at the top. Now this is too warm to take the original gravity at the minute so I need to let this cool down before I can do that. So while I'm waiting for that to cool down let's get the yeast into the must and get the wine made. So nice and straightforward I'm just giving this one last stir around and then in it goes. So here's my demijohn, an absolutely beautiful cranberry colour. I like that. I'm just going to pop my airlock in now. Now if this forms a large krause and the foamy head on top and it comes through the airlock, I'll use a blow-off pipe, but I'll see how I get on with it first. And that yeast looks like it's having a great time. 
how it's moving around inside there. I've got the temperature down to 20.1. I've just cooled this down in a jug of cold water. So now I'm going to take the original gravity. So the hydrometer goes in. It's fairly nice and buoyant. And I am starting off with an original gravity of 1.080, 1080. So that's my damage on labelled and all I need to do now is put this away and let it ferment out. So that's it for now folks. Cheers. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks, it's cranberry wine bottling day. So let's have a look at this. Look how beautiful and clear this is. I've not cleared it with finings, that's done that itself naturally. See straight through it and this has been in the demijohn for seven weeks and uh, it fermented actually for about five of those weeks quite uh, regularly. And then it's really slowed down after the last fortnight. So I'm going to bottle it at this stage because I'm probably getting one bubble through every minute, if that. So because I'm bottling, I need to prime my bottles with some carbon sugar. So I'll get a fizz. So in each of these 750ml bottles, I'm going to add a full one of these, which is the equivalent to a generous heaped teaspoon. And this is a mixture of household sugar and um, brewing sugar. In my small 330ml bottle, I'll add less, otherwise it will explode. Next, it's bung out. Siphoning tube in. I've got my tube held in place with this clip. I've got the bottom right down in the sediment. You can see some little trubby bits hanging around down there. I don't want those in my bottles, so I'm going to use uh, this filter on a funnel into the bottles. But the first bit that comes out is going to go into my hydrometer jar. So let's do it. Get the jar filled up. And then on into the bottles. It's a nice colour. A bit pink. In fact, I think it's the first genuine rosé that I've made. I don't seem to be getting the trub, so I'll, I'll have a little gamble on not using the funnel. Watch me get loads of trub now. It smells really, really good. Extremely fruity. Quite a bit of a reaction to the brew sugar. Hopefully this means I will get a good sparkle. And that's exactly spot on. I couldn't have asked for a better estimation, really. I've got to know the Demijohns pretty well now when I look at the level as to what I'm going to get out of it. I'm right at the sediment level. The trub has just entered the pipe, but I've got it away from going into the bottle. So I've got five 750s and one 330. So that's a good result. So it's all looking good. For my 750s, I'm going to use plastic bungs to seal the bottles. These are recycled just like the bottles are. I've got my bungs in hot water. That softens them, it makes them more malleable because they can be quite tough to push in the bottles sometimes. So herein is required a combination of uh, practice and brute force. One. Oh. Two, these tall ones, quite painful. They're a bit narrow, the necks. It's even harder if you haven't softened the plastic bungs, trust me. Oh, number three. Oh, 
number four, and last but not least, number five. Ah, that really does hurt. There's activity in the bottles. I can see that the uh, wine has reacted to the sugar that's in there, so the pressure will build up. And if I don't put cages on the bottles, then we're looking at phew, missiles. So I'm just going to cage these bottles now as best I can. Again, using cages that are recycled. The cages are usually good for about four or five uses before they break. There's my first one on. My 330 requires a standard bottle cap and I'll use my capper for that. And let's go. That's it. There we go. That's quite tidy. One capped bottle. So I'm now just going to rinse all of my bottles under some hot water to get the sticky residue off them from many spillage. Because I want to label these, but I don't want the bottles to be sticky. So I need to take the final gravity to work out what the alcohol percentage is. I've actually overfilled this a little bit, so let's just have a quick nifter. Oh, that's nice. Really fruity with a tart edge. I'm excited to see what it'll be like after conditioning. But I like that. It really does taste like a rosé. Bizarre. Right, let's get the hydrometer in. Nice sink, good. And I've got a final gravity of 0 0.990. That's very good. I'm just going to work out the alcohol by volume now by using the uh, original gravity and the final gravity. So the original gravity was 1.080. I deduct from that the final gravity, which is 0 0.990. That equals 0 0.09. And then I multiply this by 131.25 and my final alcohol by volume is, drumroll please, 11.8%, let's just say 12% because when the secondary has kicked off in there with the extra sugar that'll be 12% and I'm more than happy with that, that's a really good percentage for wine. So 12% ABV on my cranberry wine. So I've got my labels made up in Microsoft Word. I just need to print these off. So I'm just going to label my bottles. Try and do it as neatly as possible. Don't always get them completely straight, but hey ho. So here are my bottles now, all nicely labelled. So I'm in the conservatory, it's warm and it's south facing, and this is where my beers are going to condition. Uh, I just have a Beers of Europe box under this table, and inside the box I've got some other things already conditioning. And then it's simply lid on, oh, push back under the table, and I'm going to let that condition for two weeks. So the next film will be the opening in about a fortnight's time. So see you then, folks. Good evening from the kitchen, folks. It's cranberry sparkling wine opening night. I'm looking forward to this one. So it's a beautiful rosé colour. I'm hoping that the flavour will also be beautiful. I'm also wanting a good aroma and above all I'd really like a sparkle because I'm a bit hit and miss with my sparkle sometimes. I don't know if I'm not putting enough brew sugar in when it comes to priming but we'll see anyway. Am I going to get a pop? Hmm, a very slight pop. Let's have a look.
Okay, I can't really call that a sparkling wine, can I? Disappointed. It looks a beautiful colour, it's so clear, it smells fantastic. I could smell it as I was pouring it, so fruity. But uh, anyway, let's see. It tastes absolutely beautiful. It's very sweet, it's a, it's a medium sweet. Now considering it's 12%, that is pretty good for a medium sweet. I don't expect to get a medium sweet at 12%, that's, a, that's quite impressive. Now I'd be lying if I said there was a sparkle, but it's also not flat. When it's in your mouth you get an effervescence on your tongue, you can definitely feel that. So there is a mild tingling, but certainly I can't say it's a fizzy wine because it just isn't. But it's a very delicious wine. So I think if I was going to make this again, which I will do, I will probably not clear it with any finings and I'll probably put more sugar in for carbonation at priming stage when I'm bottling. So anyway, cheers folks. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this tonight. Sparkle or no sparkle. And I'll catch you on the next brew. Cheers. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden, and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.